before uh, we move on to Talia, I want to just say how proud I am of these two girls. Uh, being in the classroom with you guys has been amazing. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but I, I just love like seeing you guys get so in tune with the language, and I think it's really cool because being in the school, not a whole lot of your peers actually care in the fact that you guys do, and then incorporating you guys' daily life. I really appreciate it and admire it very, very much. So our next presenter is Talia Taimantua. She is the first ever women's relay champion at only 13 years old. Um, she showed tenacity, strength, and endurance during the Indian Relay Championship of Champions in 2019. Since then, she has competed in numerous rodeos all across the nation, adding on to the list of accomplishments. Talia is 16 years old and attends Lake Roosevelt High School, where she maintains a 3.7 GPA. She is the daughter of Rocky and Trisha Taimantua. Talia is an active member of the Washington State High School Rodeo Association, Eastern Washington Junior Rodeo Association, and Horse Nation's Indian Relay Council. She enjoys competing in barrels, poles, goat tying, steer, dobbing, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and her favorite cow riding. In her most recent rodeo season, she finished as Eastern Washington Junior Association and the CTJRA, all, cow, all around cowgirl for a second year on the road. A generational horseman, she introduced to she was introduced to racing. Um, and wait, sorry, a generational horseman. Her introduction to racing initiated as a toddler in pony relays. Later, she became official at the age of 12 when she debuted and won her first race aboard her most trusted paint horse, Baird. In 2021, she went to qualify multiple races for the running of the world-famous suicide race. She is also the Phillips County Fair Indian Relay Champion and current 2022-2023 Miss Colorado, Colorado Pro Rodeo Queen. Give it up for Talia. <laughs> Tell us, hush, hal, hal, ya, ya, tu. Is quen chu, tilia, time and twa. Tikin, hak, hak, hachimak, qua tikin, a Kaval tribal member. I am here to speaking today about how horses impacted my life and who I am. Some of you may know me from my family and I's heavy involvement in the rodeo and racing community. My dad, Rocky Time and Twa, used to jockey horses everywhere from out of the gates to off the suicide hill. My mom, Trisha Time and Twa, used to train her own horses. She was an avid competitor in, road, in the sport of rodeo as well as Indian relay. My dad used to race relays too, but from what I hear, my mom was better. <laughs> I can remember as early as seven years old going to Smoker's Track to exercise horses with my parents and my grandpa Montana Pacotis. Or going out to the hills behind my grandma Shannon's house with my grandpa and my auntie Shantana. If I wasn't on my horses there, I was definitely on them at my grandpa Tom's house running amok in Cartar Valley with my beloved sidekick, Bella and Roxy. So. Coming from generations of horsemen and women, it is almost inevitable that you may learn how to ride a horse before you learn how to walk. My first outing as a, um, just <laughs> coming from generations of horsemen and women, it is almost inevitable that you may learn how to ride before you learn how to walk. This is, in fact, true, because fresh out of the womb, a newborn baby, my first outing was being was being brought to Okanagan County Fairgrounds so my parents could exercise racehorses. Since then, my path is laid out right in front of me. I started with rodeo. <laughs> I started with rodeo as a little person with my mom leading me through the barrel. 
even from those early ages. I had practiced every day from the spring until the first snow. From that point on, I was slowly but surely took off. I began to go every year as a rider, and I began to move to have more responsibilities because I learned from the best people that your horses can only take care of you if you take care of them. All the way up until I was about 10, I kept my eyes on the prize. I thought there couldn't be anything greater than rodeo. I was proved wrong. Horse racing was starting to catch my eyes. Going to the track to even just watch became one of my favorite things to do. My dad had made the whole thing seem so effortless and it was beautiful to me. I started on my own time during the summer days with my best friend, Hallie. We would simply just bridle up and, ride and hop on. We had no plans. Some days we would ride through the whole town in a spielum, and some days we would meet my cousin Tito and his friend Lane behind in the spielum rodeo grounds at the sand hill. We would take turns galloping down the hill until we were all, all at the bottom. Then once we lined up, we would race on this path through sagebrush and weeds all the way through the creek. It was the best feeling I'd ever found. I knew I wanted to officially race right then and there. I was adamant to my mom and dad that I was going to race in relay. It had became my dream. Over the course of two years of nagging at my mom and dad, it had became true. My mom told me that before I could actually race, I would need to earn it by putting in the work, and there was lots of work to be done. I was prepared to do anything it took, though. After practicing and taking care of my rodeo horses first in the spielum, we would drive out to my grandpa Tom's house in Kartar so I could start galloping and feeding the best boy, Bear. I would never get done until late because it was on myself to walk out, rinse off, feed, water, and grain him. This routine would persist until we got to take Bear to our house in the spielum. Then on one day in the summer of 2018, I would get to enter Bear in the paint horse race at the Potestam races. Originally, I, was, I wanted to race in the kids' race, but there was too many kids for my mom's comfort. So instead, I was to be put in a race with three grown men. I can remember my mom being a mother, getting me the full suit of a helmet and sunglasses from my Uncle Oliver and a vest from Francis Marchand. I remember stepping on the track during Calcutta and being so nervous my heart could have jumped out of my chest. But I wasn't going to show it. I stayed quiet and calm. The lineup is easily one of the hardest parts of any race. I learned that on spot when, when everyone is yelling and moving around you, it could have ate me up. But before I knew it, the gunshot went off and all my fears were left on the line. Bear and I were, were right there all the way up until the first bend. There was a gap and I, Bear, could shoot right through and that's just what we did. The feeling was like no other. It had felt like flying, and when we crossed the line in first, that was even better. I shot, up, I shot my hand up, holding up number one. After the race, my heart had felt so full because everyone was so happy. Then my Uncle Winfred asked me if I had anything to say, and as any ego-filled 12-year-old girl, I just did that. I said, make dust or eat it, and everyone went crazy. This was the start to my history. In the next year, I would go on to Indian Relays. Whenever I got the chance, I put in any work I had to do, not just because it was my job, but because I loved the sport and every part about it. It had became my peace where nothing else mattered. It was just me and my horses. In 2019, my parents gave me the opportunity to extend my normal season and find, or not find, and race out the most famous racetracks in Indian Relay the Pendleton Roundup. For those of you who may not know about it, the event is so different and special because the track is one of the tiniest going around a grass field that is maybe about the size of a football field. There's a hand together, there's a put together PVC pipe that acts as your inside rail and stands about only two feet tall. The crowd is unmatched with the full stadium going around all the outside and people fill all the seats in every section. And you best believe it is loud. They go crazy watching us race. There's no doubt or second thought I wanted to race there. The tone of each race was set though. These starters weren't like others. They didn't care about your yells to wait. 
They just wanted to start the race. More components to this race is that the turns are very sharp because it, the track is so small, as well as you do not want to was ready to conquer this track too. With my boy Bear, I was invincible and nothing could phase us. I knew how to take care of him and he knew how to take care of me. From start to finish, Bear, oh wait, sorry. And that's the mindset that we went in with. From start to finish, I led the race to win. This gave me another big opportunity to race at the year end championship of champions. These races are held to crown the world champions of Indian Relay. I was on top of the world. I was on top of the world and ready. There would be unexpected complications though. The week of the race when I was galloping my first horse, Jake, or what was supposed to be my first horse, he tore a muscle and we were left with Bear, who was my second horse. We were left with no options but to borrow a different horse once we got there. I was nervous because this was the grand finale and I was about to have to race a horse that I didn't know. That's when I met Thunder, who had not been in very many races beforehand, but I trusted the man he came from, which was Casey Nissen. My mom and our good friend Daryl Palmer threw together a team and we were determined to make it work. We had all never been on a team together until then, so we did practices every morning as soon as we could get on the track. And during the day, we would go into the arena to practice what we were going to do. And we we tried Thunder as a first horse and that really didn't go well. We found that out there. So we had to make Bear work, which was fine because Bear is Bear's an athlete. So we made him work as a first horse and Thunder work as a second horse and we got it down as best we could. And when the first race day came, we were prepared. We would win our heat and move into championship. On championship day, the, sport, the start and our exchange was all we could have hoped for, but we came tail and tail out with Braley to Sedimit. Before I knew it, we had collided with her and her horse, which shook us both a little, but it was only a stumble. Thunder and I hadn't really, had only known each other for a day, but when I laid down, that's when I could feel past. By the third corner, we had chased Braley down and took the lead. When we finished, we finished first. After all the bumps in the road leading to that day, we endured and persevered through it. Also in that race, I decided beforehand. Sorry, guys. I decided beforehand to put a handprint over my mouth to represent missing, murdered indigenous women. It is a it is a topic that holds a lot of weight to my heart because I myself have gone through things that no little girl should have to. It took me a long time to, of, healing, of healing to get where I am now. It was not easy, but there was, but if there was anything Corsi taught me, it was to be strong and loud. I take what happened to me as only a stumble in the long, in the long. It had only made me stronger. For time and draw relay, we had chosen a phoenix to represent us because it, because it is a birth that can be burned a million times over, but it will always rise from the ashes. When I knew my mom was a badass too. <laughs> I hope to even be half the role model she is to this day. Both my parents are to thank for when it comes to who I am. They gave me the opportunities, but it was in my own hands to get the job done. And that lesson has been one of the most important to me. My dad has to always told me when I felt like quitting that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I often think of this when I'm feeling low. It is a reminder that 
nothing great in this life comes easy, and that's what I strive to be. I strive to be great. I love this lifestyle. Horses and working with them have been my release for anything that weighs on my heart and mind. I have found some of my best friends are those that cannot talk to me, but they always make me feel whole. If there is anything horses have taught me, it was to be And I love the lifestyle I have. I have to thank my parents for giving it to me because I don't know where I would be without my horses. It has affected me in everywhere. All the, all the lessons I've learned from it has made me become a greater person in everything.